on the dotted line. Let's build the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Hoping and praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at a lot of With my own eyes. Here are some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. It's not about rich men fighting other rich men for more. It's about us. It's against all privilege. It's against any system where some have unfair advantage over others. Tell the widows and orphans of Boston about the virtues of patience. I have no patience for patience. January, 1776. Dearest mother, I can't escape the fear of all-out war between the colonies and England. The colonists believe they're fighting for their rights as British subjects. But some feel the only way they can get those rights is to break away from England. Sarah, you seem troubled. I'm worried, Dr. Franklin. About what? War. I fear this rebellion may get out of hand and lead to something awful. What could be more awful than the situation we're in now? Our rights trampled by a parliament half a world away. I wish someone would give me ten minutes alone with that King George. That's no way to talk about his majesty. He's our king. He's not my king. I'm French. The whims of royalty have laid the world to ashes. King George is a worthless, brutal man. The crowned savage of Great Britain. Your servant, miss. Why, bless me, Tom. You know this individual? Don't judge a book by its cover, Sarah. James, Henri, Sarah, I'd like you to meet my old protege, Thomas Paine. Editor of the Pennsylvania Magazine? If it wasn't for Dr. Franklin's letter of introduction, I'd be rotting in the gutters of London. You're looking thin, old friend. How long has it been? Two years? Come dine with us and share your adventures. A dirty, ragged man who publicly slanders the king. And here we are, breaking bread with him. The challenge is the elevation of the common man. I wish he'd start by elevating common table manners. Mr. Payne, it's a great pleasure to meet you. Your essays against slavery have been an inspiration. Thank you, good fellow. I'm opposed to all forms of tyranny. You see, our current struggle is not really with England. I'm happy to hear you say that. It's against all privilege. It's against any system where some have unfair advantage over others. <gasps> I agree. Aristocrats are all wet. Tom, your passion is stirring, but why aren't you still writing? I've read not a word by you in months. My good doctor, I've done nothing but write. Ah! I've been struggling to define this revolution of ours, to explain it in a way that will make it clear to every man, woman, and child. At Benjamin Rush's suggestion, I've called it common sense. It should be on the streets any day now. May I? And what conclusions have you reached? I make the case for total independence from the crown. Independence? You would cut ties to the king himself? The sooner, the better. Tom, well, I agree with you. I'm not sure the people are ready for such a radical solution. The majority are still loyal to the king. Their beef is with Parliament. Ben, the whole idea of a tiny island like England imposing rule over a giant land like this is absurd. But that's how it's always been and people once thought the world was flat. It is my hope common sense will change public opinion. Tom, in my youth, I was hot-headed, but have since learned the virtue of patience. With all due respect, Doctor, tell the widows and orphans of Boston about the virtues of patience. I have no patience for patience. Thank you for the meal. Good evening. That man has some temper. And some pin. Europe and not England is the parent country of America. This new world hath been the asylum for the persecuted lovers of civil and religious liberty from every part of Europe. Hither have they fled. 
not from the tender embraces of the mother, but from the cruelty of the monster. This is fantastic. I'll never read that man's pamphlet. It's dangerous. He wants to start a war that will take years to end. Sarah, Tom is simply putting into words what is already in the hearts of many. He's a good man. However, I concede his temper is a problem. I'll see that he stays out of trouble. I'm coming with you. But you don't even like the man. I don't. But if Mr. Payne's common sense is going to appear in print, the Gazette should have it. I thought you weren't going to read it. I'm not. But we are a newspaper, and common sense is news. Hey, wait for me! Moses, we'd better get the press ready. I have a feeling we're going to need extra copies of Common Sense once word gets out. Where could Payne have gone? I hope home to bed, which is where I wish I were. Either you're all cowards or you're all fools. He must talk in his sleep. Come on. Away with you. You're blowing smoke. This is crazy talk. America's not our country. We're Pennsylvania men. This is our country. You've got a narrow mind for someone with such broad shoulders. Why should we fight to defend hot-headed foreigners from Massachusetts? Because unless we fight for each other, we'll all end up slaves to a British master. The man makes sense. How does he figure that? He, he's not point. making sense. Why do you hesitate? Has the stink of fish turned your heads to pudding? Who are you calling a pudding hair? Time to shut his mouth good. All right, then. Come on. I'm not afraid of the lot of you. Nice shot, James. Get him. There we go. Thank you. I'll show him the fight, huh? Come on. This way. What's this? Common sense? One thousand copies. I hope that's going to be enough. It's half past eight. You'd better open the shop. <sighs> early to bed, early to rise. One out of two isn't bad. Ah, quickly, I must have one before you run out too. Run out of what? Common sense, of course. Where else am I to find a copy? Wake up, lad. Bradford's is out. So is Hammersby. Ben Franklin's. This way. Maybe they have <gasps> copies. Hey, what are they doing? They closed the door. I thought they had it. They're supposed to be open. What's going on? Ah. Moses, better make that 2,000 copies. If this keeps up, Common Sense will be the best-selling pamphlet in the colonies. It's dangerous propaganda, and we've helped spread it. That's not true. You haven't even read it yourself. How do you know it's dangerous? I know treason when I hear it. Well, if you aren't interested in this story, you don't have to come along. What I'm interested in is making sure we get both sides of the story. Not everyone is going to agree with Mr. Payne's ravings. If we're going to gauge the public's response, we need to get the complete picture. That's good journalism. I'll interview that gentleman over there, and you can interview that one. Come along, Henri. I don't want you wandering off. No thanks. I think I'll have a lot more fun without you two. Common sense. More like nonsense. For all Englishmen, I didn't hear these rebels complaining about the king when he sent his best men here during the French and Indian War. So, in your opinion, Common sense fails to address... It's rubbish. And I'd feel the same way even if I had read it. Hmm. To me, common sense makes sense. It's like these threads. Alone, they are weak. But together, together, they are strong. Unbreakable. Each thread adding its own weight to make the whole strong. That is how we must weave this new land. Knowing for the first time in human history, we are all of equal value. A friend of yours? Sometimes. Well, what did he say? The tailor thinks Payne is right. Well, I spoke to a merchant, and he thinks Mr. Payne is wrong. That's because you only interview rich Tories. 
I most certainly do not. We'll stop the next man we see and interview him together. Good day, sir. My fellow journalist and I seek your opinion. We'd like to know what you think of common sense. I'm for it. You've read it? Hasn't everyone? Hit the jackpot! We'd very much appreciate your views on common sense. I'm proud to say I'm a successful man by virtue of my own labor. The men who work for me are paid a fair wage. We share mutual respect. But when I travel to England on business, the rich avoid the eyes of the poor. The poor do likewise, fearing the wrath of the wealthy. Whether my sons fare well or poorly in life, I do not have them fear another man's gaze. That's my opinion, and that's common sense. And that's one more vote for independence. Henri knows the streets better than we do. Why do we have to find him? Because Moses will need help printing more copies of common sense. Henri has a way of vanishing when there's work to be done. Don't you ever worry about what all this will lead to? Of course not. If I can't find Henri, it will lead to a lot more work for me. You're not talking about Henri, are you? No. I mean this rebellion. This Tom Paine character telling people the king is a tyrant. If enough people believe him, the whole world could be turned upside down. Sarah, don't be afraid. Be encouraged. As Tom says, we have a chance to begin the world anew. I can't think of anything more exciting. All right. Why don't you search the dogs for Henri, and I'll head home to get supper ready. James, sometimes you're not as terrible as you are at other times. Henri? Henri, James has been looking all over for you. You shouldn't be in this disreputable place where people are... reading common sense? I found a crate full. If you don't mind a little mud, they're not bad. Publisher sells them for one shilling. I'm getting two. I'll give you three to get home. One, two... Hey, I've got customers here. Of more worth is one honest man than all the crown ruffians that ever lived. Here's another. We break not from the tender embrace of the mother, but from the cruelty of the monster. Don't say such things. If you call the king our enemy, He'll become our enemy. It will cause years of bloody fighting, and Great Britain will win. Pay her no mind. She's just a girl. A girl, maybe, but no lady making herself a spectacle. Quite right. <gasps> you were saying something about leaving? Don't worry about that rabble, lass. I'm taking this filthy pamphlet to the proper authorities. They'll know what to do with the author, whoever he is. The coward didn't even have the courage to put his name on it. You were saying something about Great Britain winning? English girl? I don't want the English in here. Let's show her the door. She's not welcome here. Let's get her out of here. You really know how to make friends. Out of the way. <gasps> we serve no cause if we're as intolerant as our old masters. Tom Payne! Your servant, miss. Who's Tom Payne? If you had any common sense, you'd know who Thomas Payne is. Are you hurt? No, thank you. I have a temper and sometimes forget the virtue of humility. Humility is an overrated virtue. It's better than arrogance. No, Sarah, it's not. I was not highborn. I've had to grovel before fools. I was a fool myself, failing at everything I turned my hand to. Corset maker, tax collector, cobbler. I found my calling with words, but only after I vowed to never again bend my knee before any man. If that's arrogance, so be it. I was taught differently. You are a woman, yes. Society has placed you in a different station. 
but we both have souls, and souls need a voice. Oh, Sarah's got a voice. You should hear her when she's cross at me. Sarah, Henri, I've been searching everywhere. This speaks better than I. You may find this revolution is for you as well. War with England? Apple peach pie! Dr. Franklin? I've just finished reading this troubling little pamphlet for the third time. It's written in simple language for ordinary people, but its simplicity is what gives it eloquence. Mr. Payne says the common people are capable of ruling themselves and don't need kings or even men of wealth and high station to rule over them. But men in your own Congress disagree. They say without guidance, without controls, the common man is impulsive, even violent. Mr. Payne seems better at tearing down than building up. That pamphlet is dangerous. Indeed it is. There's nothing like it in print. But sometimes dangerous ideas are necessary. The rabble can be violent, it's true. But so can kings. Mr. Payne has written something profound. Common sense is a revolution in thought. It appears to have taken an ordinary man to grasp the power of ordinary men. Well, to dinner. We just got home. Why are we out again when there's still half a pie on the table? I wanted to listen to the night. We have night at home. And did I mention the pie? Shh. It's not about rich men fighting other rich men for more. It's about us. But we don't need a king. We can rule ourselves with laws of our own making. Tis not against anyone. Tis a struggle for a new way of being. They're all reading common sense because it makes sense. I'll say I made three pounds. Don't tell me. You haven't read it. I read the cover. It's worth reading more. I thought you weren't going to read it. Well, I thought I should at least know what I'm arguing against. Look! Mr. Payne said he wanted opposing views. Well, he's got them now. Let's get his story. Mr. Mayweather? Yes, Father? You'll need to pick up the pace if we're going to get these up before dawn. And if we ever get our hands on the scoundrel who wrote this treason against reason, I'll tar and feather him myself. I've got to warn Tom. We've got to warn him. I thought you were against him. I... well, I... hurry up! Oh, my! Welcome to my palace. Tom, we've got to get you out of here. The Tories are looking for you. Quick, out the window. What are you doing? Aren't you going to make a run for it? If I ran every time someone disagreed with me, I'd have circled the earth five times. I have nothing to run from. Let them do what they will with me. They'll never stop an idea. Not if it's a good idea. Hey, are you guys coming? Anybody? At ease. Gentlemen, last night I read a most remarkable little pamphlet. I have ordered copies printed to be distributed throughout the ranks. Study it. Learn it as you learned your Bible. And for those of you who cannot read, pay close attention to these words. For were the impulses of conscience clear, uniform, and irresistibly obeyed, man would need no other lawgiver. But that not being the case, he finds it necessary to surrender up a part of his property to furnish means for the protection of the rest. And this he is induced to do by the same prudence which in every other case advises him out of the two evils to choose the least. Wherefore, security being the true design and end of government, it unanswerably follows that whatever form thereof appears most likely to ensure it to us, with the least expense and greatest benefit, is preferable to all others.
James, more paper. Coming right up, Moses. We must have printed a thousand copies, Moses. How many more do we need? Five thousand. Dr. Franklin says we need a copy for every man, woman, and child in the colonies. James, more paper! Keep printing, Moses. There's plenty more where this came from. I can't believe General Washington wants to see you. I can hardly believe it myself. You're an esteemed man, Tom. No, just a simple man with a simple idea. And the best-selling pamphlet in America! With all that money, maybe you can afford a better room. I'm donating every shilling to the American soldiers. They lack shoes, blankets, and powder for the muskets. The money will do the country more good than it will me. Here, give this to the soldiers, too. It's really your money anyway. Although I could spend it plenty good myself. <laughs> it has been a pleasure, Miss Phillips. It has been enlightening, Mr. Payne. Dearest Mother, out of chaos sometimes comes a new and better order. Perhaps it's as Mr. Payne says. We have it in our power to begin the world anew, to bring forward a government in which the rights of all men shall be preserved. O oh, ye that love mankind, ye that dares oppose not only the tyranny, but the tyrant, stand forth. America shall make a stand not for herself alone, but for the world.